Hello and welcome to another weekly adult Bible lesson. And uh, we have recently begun a new series on the study of dispensationalism. And we hope that you were able to join us last week. If not, you can find the lessons available on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, but we are uh, studying uh, this topic because it helps us for how we interpret the Word of God. Perhaps as you've read your Bible, you read things that you notice, wow, God expected some things of some certain people that He doesn't still expect from us today. Why is that? Um, sometimes some of the dietary restrictions. Wow, the Israelites, they weren't allowed to eat certain shellfish or pork or, th or things of that nature, but, but we can today. Why? And uh, sometimes even worldly unsafe skeptics will use that as a weapon against Christians. And if Christians don't know their Bibles, they're kind of stumped as to why we, they, uh, they, their argument is, well, you Christians, you cherry pick and choose what you like in the Bible, what you're going to obey, what you're going to follow. And so we need to understand why the Bible is the way it is and why we obey certain portions specifically for today. And so that's what dispensationalism really kind of dives into. It's a method for how we interpret and understand the Bible. And so let's open up with prayer before we continue, and we'll open up this topic some more. But first, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to study your word and your truth. We pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding as we discuss these topics today. Pray your Holy Spirit would illumine truth in our hearts and help us to be good students of your word, that we can rightly divide the word of truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we began last week by discussing dispensationalism, and we started off with the fact that um, God himself never changes. That's one of his attributes. He is immutable. He is unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But this unchangeable God has chosen to deal with men throughout the course of history in different ways, and he's chosen to reveal his truth progressively. That's at the foundation of dispensationalism. We understand that the Bible is a progressive revelation in the sense that it's, we start off in Genesis learning a little bit about who God is, and as we go through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and go through the, through the Word of God, we learn more and more truth. And so the truth we know today with the complete Bible is not necessarily the entire truth that, say, Moses had available to him. And so thus there are different responsibilities and ways God has dealt with us. So that's what dispensational recognizes. There's difference in the amount of truth that's been revealed. It's progressive truth. Uh, and so let's, let's talk about this, dispensation. This word um, in our Bibles is oftentimes translated as a Greek word, oikonomia. And we mentioned last week that that Greek word oftentimes is translated in the New Testament as stewardship. Stewardship. And so there's a couple of times it's directly translated as dispensation. For example, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10. Ephesians 1 verse 10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And so there it's translated directly as dispensation, but oftentimes it's translated as stewardship. And so let's consider this idea of stewardship. Uh, stewardship involves three things. We mentioned that a steward is a manager of someone else's goods or the owner's goods, right? So there's three things that stewardship entails. Number one, the Lord of the house, the owner. Then number two, the house itself. And then number three, the steward. And so let's consider first the Lord of the house. If there is stewardship, then there must be a Lord or an owner of the house. And the Bible is very clear that God is the one that's the owner of the house. The Bible says in, Psalm, uh, in the Psalms that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so uh, he is the owner of the house. He is the Most High God, the Lord of heaven and earth. 
He's the owner. He's the boss. Secondly, the house itself. Not only must there be a Lord or an owner, but there must be a domain for the Lord to execute his rule and his authority. And again, God's house, God's domain is the world. <clears throat> he governs the world according to his will and his purpose. And then thirdly, the steward. There must be a Lord. There must be a house. There must also be a steward, one who has been made responsible. He is to be faithful and obedient to the known will of the Lord or the owner of the house. And he's assigned certain duties to be direct in direct charge over certain aspects of the owner's property. And so we understand in Genesis that the Bible says, told, uh, by, uh, God told Adam and Eve that they would have dominion over the earth, right? They were to subdue it. And so it's the idea here that God has given mankind the responsibility and the privilege to steward what belongs to God, but we have the opportunity to steward what's rightfully His, to manage it. And we're to do it not according to our own rules, but according to the house rules. Who makes the rules? God does. God makes the rules. And we talked about house rules before that if you go into someone's home, you have to respect what they do in their home, right? Every home has their own house rules, and God has his rules for his home, the earth. <clears throat> so let's summarize really quickly. The Lord of the house, the living God. The house is the world, and the steward of the house is mankind. I want to show you a quick scripture. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. 1 Peter 4.10 says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And so God is executing his plan on earth through mankind. And what a blessing that is. Okay, so talking about house rules, stewardship and dispensations. And so as we study our Bibles, it becomes very clear that there is more than one dispensation, that there have been different dispensations. God has ruled his house in different ways at different times with different people. This means that God's house rules have not always been the same. You think about Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, the Apostle Paul. They all lived in the same world, the same house, but they lived under a different set of of house rules. The house rules that Abraham lived under are different than the rules that Peter or the Apostle Paul live under. And if there have been different house rules, and this means there have been different dispensations. And so we should be careful to note that a dispensation is more than just house rules. It's also connected to truth. Remember what I said earlier, there's, uh, there's a truth that's revealed and based on that truth comes what's, ne what's needed to obey. Uh, along with the rules and laws, there are privileges and opportunities because God has put truth directly into man's hand. God always reveals truth to man, and we are responsible to act on that truth. So um, some of the rules, if you study the Bible, you'll notice are the same, that there are timeless rules, we might say, that never change. And some have changed. Some are different. Some responsibilities, some privileges have changed. And so how do we explain that? Well, let's consider this illustration, if you will. Consider Mr. Jones, who is a father of three uh, boys. And those three boys each are different age. Okay, so the father has three boys that are different age. The father has put more responsibility into the oldest son. Why? Because he's, he knows more. He's more mature. He's able to handle it. So he has more privileges and more responsibilities. Say amen if you were the older child growing up. And so here's the example here. The same father, different sons of different ages. So let's say he has a 10-year-old boy. That's the youngest, 10-year-old boy. Here's some house rules for the 10-year-old boy. He must not disobey his parents. That's a good one. He must honor and respect his parents. Amen. He must not lie, steal, etc. He may stay up until 8.30 p.m. So that's his bedtime, 8.30 p.m. He is given a small weekly allowance. 
He has some homework rules. He has he does not have the privilege of driving a car. Right. So that's a 10 year old boy. We can make a few more rules for that 10 year old. And then what about the 15 year old? Same house, same father, but maybe a different set of rules here a little bit for, for the 15 year old boy. Some things stay the same. He must not disobey his parents. He must honor and respect his parents. He must not lie, steal, etc. But here's something that's different. Now he may stay up until 10 p.m. Later bedtime, right? He is given a larger weekly allowance. He is given more rules about homework. He does not have the privilege of driving a car. And we can make more rules for that 15 year old. And then suppose the third boy is the oldest. He's a 20 year old, 20 years old. And for him, the dad says you must obey your parents. That, that always stays the same. He must honor and respect his parents, must not lie, steal, etc. He has a different bedtime rule, right? Perhaps for that 20 year old. Now it's up to him at this point. Um, he is not given any allowance. He must earn his money by working. Say amen right there, parents. He has no homework rules because perhaps he is no longer in school. Uh, now he does have the privilege and responsibility of driving a car. So do you follow that? Do you see how that there are there are the same rules that never change for the three boys? But then there are some rules that do change as the boys get older. And so think about why this is so. The same is true with the dispensations. Just as we consider the same father, Mr. Jones, the three boys born at different times, we have the same God working with different believers at different times. And so there are some rules and privileges which remain the same. And there are some rules and privileges that are new or different. And so let's consider a few men that were born at different times who lived uh, during different dispensations. Let's talk about Noah after the flood. Noah, after the flood, he had the privilege and responsibility of believing what God had said. God revealed truth to Noah. He had the privilege of walking with God. He had the responsibility to obey God. Um, he was taught the murderer should be put to death. Genesis 9, verse 6, God gave him capital punishment there. That animals should be sacrificed to God. Genesis 8, verse 20. And God did not tell him to keep the Sabbath or to circumcise male children or baptize believers in water. All right, so that's for Noah. How about under David? David lived, lived under the Mosaic law. So David had the privilege of believing what God said. So again, God revealed truth. David had to believe that truth. And he knew more about God than Noah did. You see, God revealed more at that point to David. He had the privilege of walking with God. He had the responsibility to obey God. Um, but the murderer should be put to death. Well, now David has the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. So that definitely applied. Animal sacrifices, the book of Leviticus explains all of that. God did tell them to keep the Sabbath and to circumcise male children. God did not tell him to baptize people in water. And then let's consider the Apostle Paul living in the New Testament under grace. He had the privilege and responsibility of believing God. He had the privilege of walking with God. He had the responsibility to obey God. He also was told the murderer should be put to death. Romans 13, right? That the God established government and sometimes the government punishes evildoers and he beareth not the sword in vain. And so God repeats that as a timeless principle. Animal sacrifices are no longer necessary. You read the book of Hebrews, right? Uh, God did not tell him to keep the Sabbath or circumcise male children. God did tell him to baptize believers in water, right? That's part of the Great Commission, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so let's use our analogy. We see that there are things that are the same amongst these three men, but there are things that are definitely different. And again, consider why. Consider why is this so? When one enters into a new dispensation or stewardship, this does not mean that all of the rules change. Some things remain the same. For example, in every dispensation, it's wrong to lie. It's wrong to murder. It's wrong to steal. Uh, also, in every dispensation, it is always right to believe God and obey God. 
and to walk with God. And so there are certain things that we share in common, but there are definitely things that are different, things that have changed. Here's another illustration. It's not just the house rules, but it's also the time as well, right? Think about life in America 200 years ago. Was there a TV? Were there cars? Was there electricity? No, of course not. The conditions of our culture were totally different. And so um, instead of washing your car, you had to take care of your horse, right? Instead of washing your clothes in a washing machine, you had to maybe use a scrub board and do it the old-fashioned way. On cold winter days and nights, you had to uh, light the furnace and other means. You can just turn on an electric heat, turn on a thermostat or, or a fireplace like we have today. And so there are things that are different, but there would still be things that would be the same, right? 200 years ago, you still had to eat. You still had to drink water. You still had to um, do all the things that we need today to, to survive. And so uh, we think about the different culture and timeline. So it's no wonder God has worked in different ways amongst different people throughout history. And so consider Joshua, David, Isaiah. They all lived under the same Mosaic law, the same set of house rules and privileges um, that God spelled out in the law of Moses. Peter. Paul, John, they lived under the same house rules under the age of grace, right, in the New Testament era. And so there were things that they all shared and lived under as well. And so dispensation, we recognize that there's distinctions in how God has worked with different men in different ages. Now let's quickly consider the, the, the different dispensations. And Bible teachers... Um, generally agree that there are about seven different dispensations. And I want to give you those seven here really quickly. And then in the next few weeks, we'll kind of go back and specifically look at them. But there are seven different dispensations. First, of course, we know eternity past. God has no beginning. He always was. But as far as human history is concerned, the first dispensation is the dispensation of innocence. That's under with, that's with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And innocence ends with the fall of man in sin. Then the dispensation of conscience with Enoch. And the Bible says he walked with God, right? And so he, in, in future dispensations, obviously we still live by our conscience. <clears throat> but that was the second dispensation. The third dispensation was human government. And Noah was the key man there. After the flood, God established human government. And men would live under that. And of course, today we still have human government. Um, and then the fourth dispensation is the dispensation of promise. Abraham is the key man there. Uh, and then the fifth dispensation is the law. And that's the law of Moses. Right. And that continued through the time of Christ and the disciples and John the Baptist until the cross, until Calvary. And then the dispensation of grace. And uh, while the grace of God was definitely evident throughout human history, now in this dispensation, it's, it's, it's more emphasized. It's, uh, the Bible talks about how it's fully manifested in this day and age, right? That's what uh, John chapter 1 describes. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians describes that. So the dispensation of grace. And then the seventh is the dispensation of the kingdom, the kingdom age. And obviously God is always ruling and reigning. But in that day and age, Christ himself will rule over the nations of the earth from David's throne. And that rule will continue into the eternal state. And then, of course, we know the new heavens and new earth and all of that. And so those are briefly the seven dispensations that we generally outline that we can read about throughout the scriptures that help us to understand why some things are different and also realize that some things are always the same with God as well. Each dispensation is a period in which God had different house rules and privileges, and men were given different responsibilities. And get this, here's the key, according to the measure of light God had revealed to them. According to the measure of truth God had given them. And so again, we're going back to the idea of a progressive revelation. Adam did not know everything that the Apostle Paul knew, and so there are different house rules. Each of these dispensations, again, we'll study them in detail in the coming weeks. 
Um, but here's a few things to look for when we, look, when we talk about the different dispensations. There are four distinctions that we notice within each dispensation. First, man's state at the beginning of the dispensation. And so we're going to answer questions like, what were things like? What was man responsible to do? What truth did God reveal to man at the beginning? And what truth did man have the obligation to obey? Secondly, man's responsibility. How was man to be a faithful steward under these house rules? What was man told to do or not to do? And then thirdly, man's failure. Every dispensation is marked by man's failure. How has man succeeded or failed in these responsibilities? In what way did man obey or disobey these house rules? And we're always reminded that man is a sinner in need of a savior. And then the fourth distinction is God's judgment. Each dispensation is marked by man giving God, God giving man truth and man's responsible. Man must obey. And when man disobeys, God brings judgment. And God must deal with man's failure by judging them. And that's what we see within each dispensation. And so we uh, use this as a method to properly understand our Bibles. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved and again, a God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we are able to rightly divide the word of truth to be able to understand it's all one composite word, but we understand how it all fits together. And so I hope this has been a good introduction to dispensationalism. Lord willing, next week we'll kind of dive in more specifically, talking about each specific dispensation. But let's stop here with the word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this time, and I pray that you would help us to have wisdom. We want to be uh, good students of the Bible. We want to make sure we understand the Bible as we read it, that we obey it and follow it. And I pray that you'd help us to be good stewards of the age of grace that we're living in today, that we are fully obedient to all that you ask of us. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.